Today's Spontanea Nation is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code PFT at checkout to get 10% off. Squarespace, build it beautiful. Welcome to the show that is for now. It's called Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I'm the guy who sings the song and also hosts the show. Hello to you and here and in heaven. That's right. <laughs> to all, <laughs> to all saints, both living and dead. Welcome to this show. This is a very special day, folks. I've never sung words to the theme song before. Those are not the official words either. Don't start memorizing them. That's not how it goes. Do you think I would have started in that octave? Don't think I can nail it either because I totally can. Maybe I'll do it at the end of the show. Why would I make a promise like that? I don't want to do that at all. Now it's out there. and I will have to do it. All right. Consider that your Chekhov's gun for this episode. Do you know what Chekhov's gun is? It's a it, look. This guy Anton Chekhov from Star Trek? No, nerd. Not from Star Trek. <laughs> he was a playwright. He wrote plays like The Cherry Orchard. Some people are nodding. Things to do in dead for when you're dead. People's heads are shaking now. Jared, the sisters. Three sisters. <laughs> now I'm playing invisible charades with people. <laughs> oh, charades. A game that is outlived its usefulness. Hello. I'm former Prime Minister Winston Churchill for charades. Having a party in black and white times. Or all your guests roaring drunk? <laughs> well, it's the perfect time to play charades. The game of embarrassing yourself. Sometimes they have a game called Running Charades, where you have to go from room to room. Uh-uh. See? Hey, see if you can contain me in one room to play a game. Much less... Go from room to room? No, that makes it sound like I do want to run from room to room. For the record, I don't. I don't want to run around. <laughs> and I don't want to act out movie titles. I just want to sit and read my paper in peace. <laughs> I've been at work all day! Where's my goddamn dinner? A real scene from someone's life. Can you imagine... Hey, if there's anybody listening to this who's in that sort of a situation, get out of it. I'm not saying you have to, like, murder the person that treats you that way. I'm not, not saying that. But you have options. Oh, I don't have options. I'm all alone in this world. Save your tears for tears for fears. <laughs> I'll try to make that catch up. <laughs> I, listen, I care about you. You deserve better. I'm assuming. Here's what no one wants to talk about. How about someone who's in an abusive relationship who is also a terrible person? <laughs> that's a, the, Granted, that's a very small sliver of people, but it stands to reason, right? <laughs> listen, I want to say this to everyone in abusive relationships, whether you're a good person or a bad person. Get out of that relationship. If you're a good person, I'm happy for you. If you're a bad person, stop being that way. Be a good. Be a good. Be a good person in this world. Guys, don't you know? We're just here for a little tiny bit, and then we're all gone. Make it count. Be a good person. This is how I cry. the fuck is going on <laughs> ladies and gentlemen <laughs> welcome 
to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest on. We have a free-form chat inspired by a cold, blind question. A cold, blind question. Straight out of Treasure Island. And then I invite some improviser friends to improvise a story with me. <laughs> it's just a good time. <laughs> You know, this is our 41st episode. When I think back at the first 40, I think we had a good time. We had a lot of fun. And I don't think that's going to stop now just because my voice has changed. I expect more fun to come. <laughs> Look, guys, I don't know what's going on. I feel like I've been more coherent. I That's probably not true. But it feels different. This time feels different feels like there's something wrong. Well, maybe there is. <sighs> I shouldn't have thrown out those vitamins. <laughs> I bet they would have helped. Got so mad at that bottle, like, Ugh, you stupid placebos. Threw them out the window of my car. That's not true, by the way. I know. I, look. <sighs> Guys, I'm not a rage-filled maniac. I'm just a regular rage-filled guy. Not a maniac about it. Okay, what if I stop talking by myself <laughs> and start talking to someone else? This gentleman is a friend of mine, and I'm very glad that he is here in town so I could have him on my show. I was hoping that this would happen, and lo, it did. He is the, He's giving <laughs> me a double thumbs up and a big old smile like somebody's taking his picture and they brought up cheese. He is the host of the television program Going Deep with David Rees. It is on the Esquire network of programs. <laughs> so, listen. You're going to find out who the hottest woman is to date. <laughs> you're going to learn how to tie a goddamn Windsor knot. Please say hello to David Rees. David! Hi. Hello. How's it going, buddy? Man, I'm so glad to see you. I'm... Oh, actually, I, I was going to say I'm stoked to be here, but someone told me the other day that in L.A., you're not stoked about something, you're stoked on something. They say, like, I'm stoked on being here instead of, like, I'm stoked about being here, which is right. What? I've never heard that. Stoked on being here. Or, like, like, are you excited about, I don't know, what's something in culture, right? That's great. That uh, the new Peanuts movie. Okay. I'm stoked on the new Peanuts movie. They said that's how you would say it in LA. Because I would have said, I'm stoked about the new Peanuts movie. Yeah. Stoked on. Uh, did you check three sources? I just checked this one guy. I do not believe this person. Really? Yeah. I've never heard that. And I've lived really? here forever. And here's what I do, David. I go out in my car every night and I slow down when I see young people walking on the street right. and I say, hey, what slang are you using now? <laughs> stoked on, stoked about. And they always tell me the truth. They really? have to. Well, yeah. I've never heard that. Uh, that makes me feel relieved. Is your source someone that I know? No. I can't. It was, uh, it was at night. Who was it who said it? <laughs> it was like one of those nighttime people. A nighttime source. <laughs> yeah. Das Vampir? Yeah, <laughs> it was a vampire. <laughs> I was at this place called Vampire Grammar School. And uh, I didn't know. Vampire Grammar yeah, School. I was striking out left and right. Is that because they were children or because they were vampires or both? They were uh, vampires who were trying to be cool, sound cool. Like, you know, sleeper cells of vampire. They want to blend in with regular people. So they want their slang to be sure. really human. Pristine. Yes. Yeah, really relatable and mortal. Let me ask you this. Speaking of relatable and mortal. Okay. I have a question for my previous guest. And this is a, this is a nice question. But I, f I find, well, I'm going to ask the question and then we'll discuss it. All right. What's the best gift you've ever given? Oh, that question is awesome. I feel like the guests have a hard time with questions that reflect nicely on themselves. I don't have that problem, but I'm, <laughs> worried. I'm worried I've never given a nice gift. It's tricky, right? I mean, I've gotten some amazing gifts. Do you feel in general you are a good gift giver? No. Do you? Is it always a struggle every time, even if you've known the person for years? 
to try to get them something that is uh, suitable to them. Well, this is very interesting because today happens to be my girlfriend's birthday. True. Happy birthday (laughs) to you, everybody. Happy (laughs) birthday (laughs) to you. Happy (laughs) birthday, (laughs) David's girlfriend. (laughs) Happy (laughs) birthday (laughs) to you. I'm going to sing it every time since we're allowed to now. Yeah, that's Anytime true. Anytime it comes yeah, up, totally. I'm going to sing it every totally. goddamn time. You totally should. Yes. It's time to make up for lost time. That's right. With this song. Exactly. I will never let it go by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is two episodes in a row. Uh, real? Oh, yes. it's perfect. Anyway, I just got her a bag of rice. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Does she like rice? She loves it. She's oh, crazy there about you, it. There you go. She loves bags. My, no, I mean. Yeah. One, I make a lot of cards. Like, I'm really into collage. Yes. And uh, my buddy and I have collage night together where we make collages. And, and I've been making collage cards since I was a little kid. And so I, if, if it's a significant event or something, I'll usually make a collage card. Mm-hmm. You know, but, Which everyone always loves. Mm, well, sometimes I wonder if the people who've gotten a lot of my collage cards are like, why don't you just spend some money and buy a card? No. I don't know. Because I feel like I get in a rut with the collages. I'm still cutting right. up the same books that I bought at thrift stores 20 years ago. It's like another collage. That's like, let me guess what went into this collage card. Your book about robots and your flower <laughs> seed catalog. Because I got <laughs> 20 other cards there. It's always just like, on the front of it is a robot. And inside it's like a bunch of dahlias. So one thing we're trying to do with our collage club is like expand our library of source material. Because right. that's really key. Mm-hmm. So I'm, trying, I'm basically trying to get out of a rut. Sure. Where do, you, where do you feel you are in that process right now? Well, one cool thing that's happened with Collage Club is I've given myself permission recently to just spend the evening just cutting out pictures yeah. and not even making anything, just working on that stockpile of images. Do you know what, David? Sometimes when I do stuff like that, I don't make collages, but if, there's other th- if, I, if there are things that require some assembly of some kind. Right. Like if I have to put something together for a show or something like that or right. things that I that I know I will use again and again or whatever, whatever it is, some kind of task like that. Sometimes I, I have to remind myself that I'm doing something productive by doing that because it always feels like, oh, I'm avoiding doing something else no, all by the, doing this. Yeah, the prep work is a big part of the work. Yes. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. And it can make everything so much easier down the line. Because then you have like what, like a shoebox that has all this stuff in it that's yeah, pretty, yeah. that's we ready this, to go. We have this folder just filled with like the most amazing images, you know. And when it when we feel like we have enough, where we have like the flexibility, then you just spread them all out and uh, and just like pick and choose and like try to put some together. It's really nice. And you've been doing this since you were a little kid. I have, yeah. You would do it for your parents. Mm-hmm. I started out just making homemade cards for my parents, and then my little brother, and then friends and loved ones. Did your little brother appreciate this when you were children? Probably not. I mean. <laughs> But he, but he would make me cards, like, and I still have all the cards he made me. Really? Yeah, yeah. Does he have the cards you made him? Mm, I hope. I honestly, I truly hope so. But he just moved, so he might not. What if he had some? That would be with the worst. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like do it or don't. Right. If he has all of them, I'm flattered. If he has none of them, it's like I get it. You know, older brother, maybe he resents me because I was mean growing up. Why would he save these cards? But if he just has some, it's like, oh, so some of them are good and some of them are garbage. You know? Some of them might be related to different birthdays that he has a stronger connection to. Oh, that's true. And, and you know, you only have so much space. Yeah, but they are cards. Like they're two dimensional. Like. Didn't you read that lady's book about throwing shit out? Yeah, I know. Maybe some of them <laughs> gave him joy and some of them didn't. And it's like, and he got rid of the ones that didn't give him joy. I understand that. You were, you say you were mean to him when you were kids. Yeah. How, what's the age difference? Five years. Wow. Oh, that's, yeah. It's part it's the war. I mean, that's a huge gulf. When you were a little kid, that's a yeah. huge, you can't yeah. be friends. Right. He's a baby. He was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, he started out as a baby. No, when I was in kindergarten, I brought him in for show and tell because he was just a little baby. I mean, you know, my, my my mom brought him in, but I really wanted everyone to see. I felt like I had like the, the you know, when you're young and you're superficial and you want to have like the thing that everybody's jealous of. And I was like, well, I have the newest baby in class. Mom, can we bring in Peter, my brother, the baby? And I remember very distinctly, it was show and tell. Mm-hmm. And we put him down on like a little blanket and <laughs> like on the floor where, you know, how babies just kind of, they're on their hands and knees. Yeah. And I remember that everyone's kind of standing around looking at him. And then I got down right beside him and put my face right up against my face, kind of letting everyone know, like, I can be this close because this is 
my baby brother. Sure. You know? So. But now, so you're, you feel like your motive was to kind of dazzle everyone. Yeah, totally. Did you feel, do you remember feeling affection for your baby brother at the time? Or was he just an interloper in your world? He was an interloper. He was, but I mean, I think it's complicated when you're a little kid and then a new kid comes along. I don't remember feeling affection for him. I was probably just fascinated by him. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I will say he used to be so cute. Like <laughs> when I look at old photos of him, uh -huh. I can't believe how cute he was. He was the kind of kid that he had really long eyelashes. And like when oh, we when we would go yeah. on vacation and like be in a hotel cafe, the waitresses would be like, oh, you're going to be a heartbreaker with those eyes. Like they would say stuff like <laughs> but that. But he's like him. a baby. Well, he was like a, you know, like a little kid. Oh, like So inappropriate because he could understand what was being said. Yeah. But he didn't, I mean, did he understand? I think he did. He knew he was being complimented about something that made him uncomfortable. Do you know what it is? They understood. That's where right, the problem right, is. Right, 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 right. Uh, were you a cute baby? No. No? Come on. A I baby? Don't, you don't think you were a cute baby? Oh, a ba when I was a baby? Yeah. Probably, probably, I probably looked super average. <laughs> like just straight up baby. Yeah, you know, white baby. Episcop Episcopalian baby. North American Episcopalian baby. That's right. Dime a dozen. <laughs> One and two becomes president. N A E B. Yeah, exactly. Um, I had long eyelashes when I was a, a little kid. Right. And I remember my sisters ooing and aahing over them. And then I have this this vague, it's just like a flash of memory of being in one of my sister's bedrooms. And it was her and one of her friends. And they put mascara on me. <laughs> yeah. Did you like that? I did, yeah. It's a it's a pleasant memory. Like yeah. I don't all I remember is just that. I remember them because right. I it's like I was being praised. Yeah, yeah. For just being, yeah, right? And you're the subject of attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Positive attention. Yeah, which feels amazing. Positive attention. And then the, the eyelash, the, the mascara thing was like a secret. You know, it was like, like they didn't say this is a secret, but I had the sense of this is like a, this is a window into their world. It was a of rich, like an yeah. older, more grown up world. They were probably like, you know, 15 or something. There was like a ritual of their culture. And yes. They, and they and they brought they folded you in for a moment. I was an ambassador. And you were part of their tribe. To their land. Yeah. Or part of their, like I was a man called horse. Yeah. Yeah. And they beat me with bats. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is the best gift you've ever been given? Is there anything that stands out in your mind? Yeah. This is a really amazing gift. A guy I went to high school with senior year in high school, and then we lived together in Boston for a while. His name is Steve Connor, and he's a luthier. He builds classical guitars. He's really, really good at it. A luthier is a guitar maker? Yeah, or an instrument know. instrument builder. Like I did not know that. Instru instrument builder, yeah. So when I was getting ready to leave Boston after we'd lived together for like four years, and I was about to move to New York City from Boston, he, unbeknownst to me, had built me a guitar, and he, get, and he uh, left it on my bed like the night before I left, and I opened it up, and I was like, Whoa. Wow. This is incredible. That's intense. It was a handmade guitar. Yeah. Yeah. I still have it. I should I should hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I totally have it. I left it on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly where it is. <laughs> where is it right now? It's in my upstairs bedroom on a guitar stand. Okay, there we chilling. go. Chilling. Displayed for all to see. Because it's a wonderful piece of craftsmanship. Yeah. Totally. Except nobody go ever goes up there. When did you start playing guitar? I started playing guitar in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, I started, um, I don't even talk about this. I started a secret rock band with my friends and they weren't allowed to tell anyone about it. Have I ever talked to you about that? I've, this sounds familiar. Okay, yeah. So we were all- you, Hold on a second. You hesitated for a second because you thought maybe it was not yet time to reveal the secret. It's weirdly, you know, <laughs> it was in, we started it in 1986, I think. Mm -hmm. And it, I swore them to secrecy. Like we can never tell anyone. And then at some point it was like, okay, you can tell whoever you marry. Like you can tell your spouse. And uh, it's like a really crazy thing that happened because like um, I was everyone really- Everyone went along with this. I was really- To the best of your knowledge, everyone agreed, yeah. agreed to the secret. Well, I mean, it's I, sometimes I feel like I should write a book about it. It was a very intense creative experience, and it was also brought up. I'm, looking back on it, I realized how controlling, like how truly controlling I can be. Because it was like mm -hmm. you guys are going to be in my band with me, 
You're never going to tell anyone about it. We're going to practice every weekend. Like, this is your social life as long as we're <laughs> Get friends. used to it. Yeah. This is your new reality. This is your new reality, man. <laughs> totally. Um, and, 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 and eventually they all rebelled against me and they started having girlfriends and drinking. And I took that really personally mm -hmm. and I really held a grudge against that. And eventually I had to realize like our secret band was ending that time in our life was ending. We were going to go off to college and that was going to be the end of the secret band. Yeah. Um, but we recorded like, I don't know, 2000 songs and, um, oh, oh, excuse me, excuse me, 2000 songs. We were, yeah. I mean, a lot of the music was just pure improv. Oh, a lot of it was? Yeah. <laughs> and then what happened? A lot of these 2000 songs were, were made up. Just some jams? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Did they all have names? Yeah, they're all ah! names. No, because I was the archivist. Oh, oh. I mean, this is another big impulse with me. I would catalog everything. I still have all the I really need to digitize these tapes. Yes, you do. And we would do cover songs. And it would, but I, and, and uh, at some point, I realized that they wanted to play music in public because we were all in high school and you want to play in a band. And yes. Be cool. So we started other bands, but those bands had to have a completely separate catalog from the secret catalog of our secret band. So I was like, okay, we can play in public, but not, not as secret band, name redacted. We're going to start, we'll be the Bloody Fist of Defiance. You know, we changed. And, and you would have completely different songs. Completely different catalog, no overlap. It wasn't allowed. The secret band had to stay secret forever. And Did, I want to say one more thing. Sure, yeah, of course. <laughs> In spite of how unhealthy it was, and I truly think it was unhealthy. Yeah. And they have since said like, yeah, there were some nights where you made us, we didn't really want to do it. <laughs> but in spite of all that, I will say it was the most genuinely creative thing I've ever done. It was exhilarating. Do you think it needed to be secret in order for it to be that way? I think it did for me because I had to, I wanted to. Control. Yes, for you. Oh, right. Okay. Clint, this is all, look, okay. from here on out, every question I ask is okay. about your motivation. Okay, right, right, right. <laughs> it was, um, I didn't want it to be corrupted. Again, I feel like it's very, I've, I don't know if I've ever talked to my therapist about secret band, but I feel like this would get, I have a very black and white view of the world a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to become more sophisticated and understand that there's a lot of shades of gray. Um, cause it makes life a little easier. Yeah. I think that's true. It seems like, it seems like it would make it more complex, right? But it actually makes, you know what? Really that's easy. deep. I mean that I'm going to remember that you said that that's really cool. Luckily yeah. we're recording this. Uh, that, uh, perfect. <laughs> um, but I feel like for me, because it was going to be a band with my friends and I pr probably started out being secret because I was a little shy and was like, I don't want people to know we're in a band. What if it's horrible? You know? And mm -hmm. so, but then I think it did become a way, you know, what's interesting. And I don't mean to make light of this by comparison, but in a way it's like, I don't want to say it was an abusive relationship, but you know, that thing you've always heard where they say, if you're in a relationship that you're keeping secret from people, it's probably not a healthy relationship. Yes. And that can be a relationship with alcohol or a love affair yeah, or absolutely. a cult. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? And in a way, when you think about it, my secret band checking a lot of those boxes <laughs> because <laughs> they weren't allowed to tell anyone what they were doing at my house. They had to do what I said because I would give them a tape recorder and say, go home tonight and make songs for our band and sing them into the tape recorder and give it to me so I can listen to it. I'm not and they would do it. They would do it. I think that's what they kind of resented when I would give them homework. Yeah, sure. Well, they were, they were clearly like <laughs> it's so under your thrall. Like why? Oh. Not, I mean, did these guys ever rebel? Did they ever say? Yeah. This is what <laughs> and this was the worst. My friend Aaron, I told him <laughs> when his birthday was coming up. This is really embarrassing. I've talked about this before. I said, we need a bass in our band. <laughs> it's your birthday coming up. You have the next birthday. Ask your dad for a bass guitar. And he did, and he asked for a regular guitar. And his dad gave him an old Fender Mustang guitar. And I was so mad that the next day at lunch, I told the other two guys in the band, John and Mike, don't talk to Aaron oh. at lunch. Oh and God. so they shut him out. And, and we, they and, did it. <laughs> and, then, and then John turned to me later and was like, oh, this is bringing up a lot of stuff. Whoa. Whoa. John, John turned to me and said, oh, my God. I'm so sorry, guys. Oh. <laughs> he turned to me and said, remind me why we're not supposed to talk to Aaron. <laughs> And I said, because he was supposed to get a bass and he got a guitar. 
So that's healthy, right? <laughs> Look, uh, when oh. when you were a boy, you thought I was a boy, you know, yeah. and you acted as a boy. That's true. And now you are a man, and you've put away childish things. I have. <laughs> it was still the most fun I ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to go on the record and say, in spite of all that. Je ne regret rien. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. David Reese, uh, it is now, <laughs> it's January of 2016. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you and to everyone. What would you like? Is there anything that you would like to promote? Anything that you t- you'd like to tell people about? Just check out my secret band. <laughs> maybe by the time this is Maybe it'll all be released. digitized and I'll put it all on the internet. Oh, at the very least, can people find your Law & Order theme song with lyrics somewhere? Oh, yeah. That's on, uh, I think if you Google uh, David Reese Law & Order, you probably find our Law & Order song. Yeah, it's I a recorded great song. that. You know what? And I will say this. The... That was one of those guys from my secret band. We made that song together. What a reunion that must have yeah, been. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so secret band became public band. And David, where can people find you online? Um, I guess my website, mnftiu.cc. Which is the acronym for my new fighting technique is unstoppable. Dot Charlie CC, Charlie. Dot Charlie Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Alpha Tanga Bravo. Yeah, yeah totally. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to take a break, and then I will ask you for a location for our improv. And when we come back, we will meet our improvisers. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Yeah. Hi there. My name's Lee. Lee Sumatris. There seems to be some sort of confusion Um, I don't sell mattresses. That's not me. My name is Lee. My last name is Sumatras. S-U-M-A-T-R-A-S. It's like Sumatra, but with an S on the end. I don't know if it got changed at Ellis Island or what the story is, but that's, that's my family name. It's been that way for as far back as I can remember. I, I mean, I can't remember being a baby, but I do remember learning my name. Um, I think people are trying to reach Lisa mattress that's a mattress company um and from what i understand they're they're pretty great they have done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience uh that's where you have to go lie down on a mattress in public and it feels too intimate just feels real intimate especially if you go there with your uh your partner uh and you're lying there and you feel like everyone gets a glimpse into your personal uh, life. Uh, I don't like it. You might as well be nude on there, but don't be. Um, anyway, I get, uh, I get a lot of calls. I don't know how this is happening because if you see it spelled out, it's not the same at all, but I'm getting phone calls at my home. People saying, I want to get a mattress. And I'm saying, I don't have mattresses for you. That's Lisa mattress. Uh, they sell a 10 inch mattress that comes in all sizes and is crafted with three unique foam layers for cooling, supportive comfort. Now I just say that off the top of my head because I got so used to, uh, dissuading these, uh, mattress hopefuls calling my home. And they, uh, and let me tell you, some of these people would not take no for an answer. One of them threatened to come to my house and forcibly buy a mattress from me. Now that's not, that's not, not polite. It's not polite. I have a wife and I have two sons. My two sons are small and they can't defend themselves. Not that they have to. They're not, I don't hit my kids. This is getting off track. I'm trying to tell you, if you're looking for a mattress, go to Lisa Mattress. They give you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. It's it's less risky than having the name Lee some mattress, if you can believe that. What, What kind of a world has this become? Oh, and here's a good thing. Lisa's like the Tom shoes for mattresses for every 10 mattresses they sell. They donate one to a shelter. Now that's great. I don't do anything like that. I, I, my business is I sell bait. I sell live bait and it's not like for every, uh, 10 worms I sell, uh, I'm going to donate a worm to a homeless shelter. What, what would they do with it? They would not thank me. I'll tell you that much. Listen, don't call me at home. Here's what you do. Go to L-E-E-S-A dot com slash PFT and enter promo code PFT at checkout. And you get $75 off. That's a great deal. And please, for the love of God, stop calling my home. If, if you're going to do it, at least call during regular business hours because people are calling exclusively at, at 3 a.m. That's nuts. Okay, this is Lisa Mattress for Lisa Mattress. Go to Lisa dot com slash PFT and enter code uh, PFT at checkout gets seventy five dollars off. We'll all steam at the end there. <laughs> There's something about that ad that I liked so much. 
I don't know. I just loved it. It's like it's a fun, entertaining part of the show, even though it's capitalism. Welcome back to the place you still are at. <laughs> this is still happening, meaning my brain problems. Uh, what a fun chat with David Reese. Now he's gone. He's out of the picture. And it is time to meet our improvisers. Do you know what, though? Here's who I never introduced. Mr. Eben Schletter on the piano. Speaking of secret things, Eben has a sister, and when they were growing up, Eben was only allowed to like certain things. Like if his sister liked a band, only she could like the band, and she instructed Eben, you have to find another thing to like. Then Eben would say, how about this? Could I like this? And she would say, mm, okay. My upbringing, totally normal. <laughs> um, now it is time to meet our improviser pals sitting right, <laughs> right next to me, doing a squinched up smile like she couldn't be more adorable. <laughs> it is a pleasure to welcome back to Spontaneous Nation, Shuli Cowan. Hi, Paul. Shuli, hello. hello. How have you been? I've been dreamy. You've been dreamy? Yeah. Do you have dreams? Do you have vivid dreams? You know, I don't have as many dreams as when I was little, but I also don't have any, as many nightmares as I used to. How about it? Oh, when you were a kid, you would worst. have nightmares and it was horrible. Recurring nightmares. I don't like stress dreams where it's just some dumb dream where you're late for a thing. Oh, that what is a waste. the worst. What a waste of your subconscious uh, mind palette. And it's not like you can fix it in the dream. No, you can't. No. Do you ever have a dream where you tell yourself in the dream you're dreaming and you wake up? Not as much. It's more when I wake up and I'm like, oh, that was a dream. How about that period where you wake up and before you're fully awake, where you're trying to figure out, did that really happen to me? Is that a thing that just happened in my life? And then, because you think you're awake, but you're not awake. And then slowly you are awake. And you're like, no, of course that was a dream. Yeah, but sometimes those like where your husband says something mean to you in the dream and then you wake up and you're angry. <laughs> and they're like, you were dreaming. I didn't really say it. I'm like, but you might have said it. Yeah. There's a part of my subconscious that feels you might have. Dream grudges. <laughs> I have dream grudges sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shuli, I hope you will not have any dream grudges as we uh, go into the world of fanciful notions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know there were better words that I wanted to say, but I couldn't get to them. <laughs> couldn't get to them. Too high up on that shelf. <laughs> <laughs> a record three appearances in a row. Are you on the next episode too? No, <laughs> not at all. Ladies and gentlemen, Jean Villa Peak. Hi. Jean, welcome back oh, again. Thanks, Great to see you again. It's always fun to have you here, obviously. Being here. Thanks. What if it was a misery? <laughs> <laughs> I owe some people some favors. And you don't like me either. What's on your oh. What's on your top? Feathers. I have never worn this it's since great. I bought it three years ago. My aunt and uncle are visiting, and I was just uh, speaking with Shirley. Shirley, oh no, no, <laughs> with Shirley and Clyde earlier. Shirley and Clyde. Where are they from? A cartoon? No. <laughs> what's happening? I also did that sleep last night. I did for three hours. I was awake. I am. I don't. I am out of it. I had bad sleep too. It's not cool. It's I usually sleep us. really, really well. In the last three nights, I've just woken up and I've had nightmares. And then I've also been like, we moved out. How old was I when we moved out of that house? Like, just evaluate everything oh, that's happened in my life. And then, the like, worst. I try to imagine a giant hand that I crawl into <laughs> to try and sleep. If no, I'm, go on. That lifts me up mm -hmm. and I can fly over the world with a blanket. That is my thing of like, all right, I'm just going to imagine the giant hand that scoops me up, picks me up, and I can not worry but i couldn't and even you, wait 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 but you're sailing hand. over the world or you're under the blanket like i'm up as high as a plane and i have a right. blanket because it's cold up but it's like a, a reverse flying carpet kind of where you're under yes. the thing yes oh and it's oh, just your little carpet. your little head and hands peeking up yes that's my try that usually gets me to go back to sleep but last night i was like why is it a man's hand or a woman's hand and what does that mean like then i couldn't <laughs> it was so bad. i'm gonna try that though so i put on this feather shirt <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I forgot what it had to do with your uncle and aunt. They're coming. I just have a lot. And I don't usually dress. I have owned this for three years. I never wore it. I just am out of sorts. But I'm glad it's working. 
It's totally working. Maybe it's, things are going well now. You're making it work. <laughs> Gene, we'll be back to pick okay. you up a little later. <laughs> Seated next to Gene, this gentleman, we just we saw him very recently as well. Not three in a row, though. Gene holds that distinction. I think you're the first person three in a row. And then what did you think? I don't know. I plucked my nose. <laughs> I don't know. I am seriously concerned about this show. It's <laughs> something's happening, right? This is this is this is gonna be something the best happened. one ever. I think David's truth was too real. It really that was a fascinating. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, Chris Tallman. Hi. Chris, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh how are you doing? I'm doing well. Um uh <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything. I have weird sleep stuff sometimes too. I always would sleep like that. Mm -hmm. And then about, I don't know, sometime in like the last year or six months, all of a sudden I've now gotten to this thing where I go to like, I, nothing has changed, but now I kind of lie on one side. I sleep on my stomach. So my head's on one side of the pillow. And then after about five minutes I go, and the, and it's it, it's not like a balancing. I don't think it's a neurotic thing. It's just right. literally like, well, I'm just lying here, and this. I guess I don't. Maybe I'll try this position, and I probably do that seven or eight times, and then all of a sudden I'm wake up in the morning. It's wow. I don't like, know what that like is. Like a dog that has to turn I around guess, three times. I guess, but it, it's it's but it's not about I want to change positions. It's literally yeah. just I've been lying here and nothing's happening, and I'm not falling asleep. Right. And I guess maybe it's a little warm on this cheek, mm -hmm. so I'll, over here. I don't know what that is. There, I feel like there's few things worse than becoming hyper aware of your surroundings in the dark, mm -hmm. where you're you're this is you're supposed to be asleep, and then all you're thinking about is like your your full physical form, how it is just how it's laid out on the bed. Mm -hmm. uh, any any you're like you're now you're listening for sounds like a clock ticking or a dog barking outside, or my kids coming in the room. That happens. That might be part of it too. Is that oh, I'm? You have to be vigilant. At nighttime, I, I'm sort of like the I'm, I'm like the night cop. You're the protector. Well, yeah. Well, so every once in a blue moon, like I'll be asleep, and all of a sudden I'll hear just the faintest. It's almost just like air moving, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "There's somebody in here with us," <laughs> and it's 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 our kid. Sure. But every once in a blue moon, I have that same sensation. And I look over, and nobody's there, and I'm like, "Oh, this is not this is not good." Oh boy. Yeah, I know. Guys, I think we're doing great. <laughs> I love us. Why are we all crying? <laughs> Nobody's sleeping tonight. I didn't realize tonight. I was. Well, hopefully we'll get through this. Hopefully we're not dreaming right now. Ooh. And this is not a Nightmare on Elm Street situation. Ooh. Or a Joss Whedonverse situation. I always thought he did dream episodes very well. That's my two cents. <laughs> and now... We are going to begin our improv. Now, just so as you know, we use the aid of sound effects in our storytelling. Let's say there is a scene occurring at the same time as the scene we're currently in. We want to cut to that scene. We use this sound effect. Cut to. Now we're over there. Same time. Same time. Lateral move in time. Let's say somebody's remembering something. We're going to flash back. Why, of course, we use the flashback sound effect. That one should be in the Library of Congress. <laughs> Let's say we want to return from the flashback into the present or go into the mysterious future. You'll hear this flash forward sound effect. Get it? Time has passed and it's spooky. All right. Those are some sounds. I hope you have written them down and you will consult them periodically throughout the episode. How will you consult them? If you just wrote down cut to and you <laughs> forgot to memorize what it sounded like, that is not going to help you. Oh, God, you guys, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to reveal our location. <laughs> provided to us by Mr. David Reese. That location is Pet Store Post Robbery. Pet Store Post Robbery. Very big reaction from one of our improvisers. We take you now to Pet Store Post Robbery. Robbery. Now, can you describe the uh, the person who robbed the pet store? Yes. Uh, this is a. Ch it was a child. One of those. One of those bossy kids. A bossy child. Yeah, with a face, a really mean face. I mean, not cute. 
Uh, no, no. Uh, maybe when he was a baby. But um, one of those scowling, uh, bossy kids. And, what, and what, Let me ask uh, you this, ma'am. What, what religion did he look like? Oh, God. L- Lutheran or uh, for sure Protestant. But Episcopalian? Maybe that's it. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not. A, I like Episcopalian. No, no, no. It's not about that. This is very helpful. Thank you very much. We've been having a similar <laughs> complaint. Who's who's crying over here? I'm sorry. That's Sir? Funny. That's my husband, Bert. Bert, Bert is it? Yeah, it's my name's on the store. All right. I'm Officer Goldstein. I'm uh, just trying to get down uh, a few details uh, so we can help you catch, apprehend this, uh, this robber of your pet store. <laughs> Bert, did you see anything? Oh, it's just exactly what she said. It was just a mean kid. It's a dumb, mean kid. What? <laughs> you seem very distraught. Did he, did he assault you in any way? He kept on saying he was going to hurt the rabbits. He was going to throw the fish down the toilet. He's just a mean old kid. <laughs> no, but it, it, yeah, go we, on, man. We thought he might read, have read uh, 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 of mice and men. Uh, we were thinking maybe he's one of the, in one of those English classes, pet the rabbits. He was very obsessed with the rabbits. A lot of literary references. He used, he said Ibid a couple times. And I was <laughs> really? Like, I, I don't know what that means, but I'm seeing it in a book. Did he mention any footnotes? <gasps> yes, Officer Goldstein, he did. It seemed like he was speaking in italics a couple times. I definitely think that's what's going on. He hit my husband. What did he hit you with? Dog food. He hit you with dog food. <laughs> Look at that. That's he's, very clearly the side of a can. It was, in a, it was in a can, not a bag dog food. Bert's Pets offers the freshest of pet food. I don't use that bag crap. I'm not trying to impugn the quality of your pet food, so I just want to get details so I can impugn? help that Impugn? Wow, I've never heard a police officer. Don't well, like, we don't know any Irish. Sound like some fancy book kid. I've, I've read a few books, mostly criminology. <gasps> What's that? So you're like a detective then? No, you're, I'm you're just a, to... I, I'm, here's the thing. I'm a beat cop right now. Right now. But I'd, I'd like to become a detective. Mm-hmm. Can I, can I tell you something? Please. Sure. Here, have a seat on the turtle stool. Thank you very much. Oh, I thought it was an actual turtle. No. Yeah, that's part of the, <laughs> yeah. part of the charm of birds. good stew. Meow. <clears throat> I... <gasps> that's a big cat. Megan! How do you get her? How do you get her? She's probably so scared. <laughs> Take oh, it easy now. Are you... Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. And what's your name again? Uh, B- Betty. <laughs> Betty? It's Betty, on the sign. Are you... Betty and Birds. Oh, I didn't realize that... Uh, I, I didn't know if those were just uh, sort of figureheads. I didn't realize you were the actual Betty and Birds. Like, like Ben and Jerry or something like that? Who? <laughs> All right, you guys. I pulled off the deal. <laughs> hey, listen, Tom. Do we have to be in this uh, this pet store robbery gang? Shut up, shooter. All you right. got your free frog. <laughs> got him in my pocket, right next to my slingshot, and all these jacks. Tom, I'm allergic to puppies. <laughs> Yeah, look at him. He's all breaking out in hives, and he's sneezing all over the place. So you know what, Alfred? No, what? You could have this bowl of goldfish. <laughs> Thank you. You're Wait, welcome. I liked it better when we just knocked a hoop down the middle of Main Street with a stick. Ah, <laughs> oh, fiddlesticks. Everybody knows that hoop rolling's over, and Robin is in, and everybody wants a pet, right? Can I tell you my secret? Oh, right. Yeah, yes, yes. I got a secret police force of my own where I'm the head detective. Oh, so not municipal. No, it's not sanctioned by the city. It's just a police force. It's a bunch of friends of mine that it I sounds made. Like vigilantism. Police force. Sounds like what? Vigilantism? Vigilant? I, I don't Vigilantism. know. Vigilantism. Well, I've only seen it in books. I don't say it in my regular life. I'm not like a well, judge. You should give it a whirl. It's actually, it's a fun word. Say it again? Vigilantism. Vigilantism. That's right. You Isn't got that it. what I said? You said vigilantism, What's which that? seems like more about being vigilant. Dil- due diligence. Like due a diligence. villager. Like a villager. No, that's that would be <laughs> vigilantism. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is vig- vig- You Here's what it is. The word is... Vigilantism. Mm-hmm. You said vigilantism. Mm-hmm. No, I don't remember what you said. You, you've gotten me all turned around. You've been writing everything down. I can't <laughs> believe you didn't understand. Can I tell you another secret? 
Sure. I, I'm illiterate. <laughs> oh. oh, those are just little pictures. <laughs> they're just oh, little, how cute. Little pictograms. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, yeah. Well, there's Megan. <laughs> you're really you're a good jar. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I don't want to have to go Lord of the Flies on you guys, I don't but know. I will. What is that? I don't even know. <laughs> Jeez Louise, read a book. Is that literally a book that you're telling me to read? Literally. Oh, uh, more homework. Come on, it's in your age range for reading. You can handle it. I just, I think we should all just get some more root beer barrels and just be pals. I yeah. think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start calling you Piggy. Oh. oh no. Sucks to your asthma, Piggy. That's a reference, I bet. Sure is. Tom, what? Can't we just like? Be normal kids? We are normal kids. Taking out feelings of anger on others, just like all the Americans now. <laughs> I guess that's true, but I mean, do we have to steal pets? Sometimes love doesn't come to you. Sometimes you've got to grab love with both hands and shove it in your pocket with your slingshot and your marbles. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty deep. I'm going to remember that you said that. Look, you made Albert cry. I just think you're angry because your mom never came home from buying cigarettes. <laughs> she she had to go far. They don't let you smoke here anymore. I'll be yeah, right back. And uh, what do you you just, <laughs> mommy? Do you do you gotta go? Ah, oh, Jesus! Why are you talking so much, Tom? I have a gut headache. Won't you stay here for some child adult interplay, perhaps with an educational Stop toy? Stop watching Sesame Street, Jesus! I I, 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 I gotta get cigarettes. Yeah, just wait here and have an orange juice. Wish Maria and <laughs> Gordon were my parents. How dare! Oh well. <laughs> And that's why I think it's important that all of you read a separate piece. Because it is far superior to catch her in the rye. You know, Susan and Gordon were in a relationship. Maria was maybe kind of with Louise. I think I, she got married to Louise yeah, eventually. I think you're so. picking your parents. You can pick and choose from extra couples. Nobody says you have to go all the way with it. Why wouldn't you pick David? David's pretty cool. I like David. Yeah, he always lived, lived above the store. Hey, did you hear Maria retired? Well... Yeah. Do you think maybe she'll be with Mr. Hooper now? In heaven? What? Oh, I... You guys, shut up! Shut up! I don't want to hear about where Mr. Hooper went! He went to get cigarettes! He went to get cigarettes! Tom, your... Your snake! Your snake's got away! Oh my god! I think I'm allergic to snake bites! Don't worry! I'll suck out the poison! Somebody <laughs> catch him! He was my best friend! <laughs> All right, I think I got enough to go on now. He's a little boy, right, right. very unpleasant looking. Yeah, he, I mean, definitely. Oh, you could tell if he was going to be an adult, he'd be like in jail or right. like on television right. or something. And uh, looks Episcopalian. Sure, absolutely. You could just tell he doesn't really have Christ in his heart. And had the strength to throw a dog food can at your head. Oh, real strong muscles. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, and then I'll be on my way. And then I'm going to catch this kid. <gasps> With you, with the real police force, or with your imaginary secret ghost cop friends? Okay, now I never said they was imaginary, just that they were secret. No, I'm just trying to diminish you. Oh well, mission accomplished. Right. I do feel diminished, right. and uh, ashamed that I told you my secret. Mm -hmm. I wish I hadn't, but it's out now. So uh, there we go. Interesting, you didn't deny the, the ghost part of it. Well, they're not. Not all of them are ghosts. <laughs> I've said too much. Oops. <laughs> Where are we? So, we're supposed to be going and catching a bunch of kids now, are now, we? Now, look, I just need just to be my police force so I can be the detective for once. Are we getting uniforms or not? Well, I mean, do you have anything blue? <laughs> Could I get a blackjack at least? I'd like to slap someone across the shoulder. Let's see what I got here. Here's, here's do a... Do you have a bowler with a shamrock stick? To the top. No, no, I don't know what that's an aid of. We're supposed to be proper policemen. We're not supposed to be. But I want the humans to think that we're all friendly and joyous. Look, look, look. It can't get out that leprechauns are real. Can I just tell people you're a ghost? What about a will o' the wisp? Is that like a ghost? Yeah, it's like a, a ball of light. It floats along and lures people over to the mall. 
Oh, right, right, right. Like a cat's I, hairball. Yeah. Isn't this a bit of vigilantism? Vigilantism? I don't live veganism? in a village. Wait, how is it pronounced? Is it vigilantism or vigilantism? Up here we pronounce it vigilantism. Okay, I got to remember that. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so uh, I'll tell people you're a will of the wisp. I may shorten it to ghost. Sure. <laughs> Everyone just uh, dig through your closets and if you can find anything navy blue, just wear that. Right. And uh, any kind of shiny button or badge that you have, uh, just stick it on your shirt. You could even put an earring through a shirt with the backing through the back. <gasps> that's oh, true. that's a great idea. You've got beautiful gold ones. Oh, thank you so much. So then we get these kids, eh? Then um, we round up all these uh, these uh, rotten kids who are who are robbing the pet stores. Can we boil them down and turn them into syrup? Um, I was thinking of uh, bringing them to justice, like uh, um, you know, arresting them and good uh, pint, good yeah. pint. Yeah. Well, then we'll be real cops, will we? And then you're going to bring us into the force and we'll be real police officers oh. just like you. Well, I mean, that's certainly the goal. I mean, I, I can't, I'm not making any promises. Uh, I'd certainly like that to happen. Um, but but as, as of now, you should all maintain your current jobs. Uh, don't quit your jobs. I always fancied myself a bit of a Charlie's angel. Is that right? Sure. So plain clothes. You, they you, started out as plain clothes policemen and then moved up. But well, they started out as uniform police. Uniform police. And they were writing parking tickets and oh, what a drag it, it was. It was hard and then, for them. Yeah, and then they uh, they left the force. But we're we're doing the opposite. We're not in the force, right. and we're going to get on it, right? Like the fall guy. <laughs> the the Lee Majors vehicle where he was the stunt man. Right. He wasn't he wasn't a police officer, but he became a from a stuntman to a bounty hunter, and he sort of joined the law force from that side. For out to in. Refresh my memory. Why was it important that he he was a former stuntman? Did stunts come into play I in think, his bounty I mean, hunting? Probably. He was just all rough and tumble like. He right. was so handsome. Oh, and cousin Howie was so funny. Cousin Howie, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't remember the fall guy. Like, as he well looked as like I, Bruce Boxleitner. But oh, he sure. weren't. But he, he wasn't a Bruce no, Boxleitner. No, no. Bruce Boxleitner, the star of Bring Him Back Alive. Mm -hmm. Okay. I almost feel as if we've gotten off track. Scarecrow um, and Mrs. Smith. The King. Um, uh, starring Jack. <laughs> sorry, King. Ex Charlie's Kate, Angel. Kate. Uh, yes, Kate Smith. TJ Hooker? No, Is that something? Kate, Kate Bosworth. Smith. Kate, what was your last name? There was uh, <laughs> Farrah Fawcett. Majors, Cheryl Ladd. At the time. Cheryl Ladd was one. Tanya Roberts. She was another. She had the last season. Queen uh, of the Jungle. Oh, that's right. Sheena. 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 There's and a part Cheryl Teagues. Don't forget Cheryl Teagues. Wasn't she a something? I don't think Cheryl Teeks was ever... Cheryl Ladd. Cheryl, Cheryl Ladd. We've covered her. I got my just made posters her. at the same time. Kate, Kate Jackson. Kate Jackson. Kate Jackson. Did she fall in love with David Lynch? Who didn't? <laughs> All right, welcome to the meeting. <laughs> I can't wait to see that new Twin Peaks. Right. Well... Uh, so as I was saying, only one of them's a ghost. Um, the rest of them are uh, mates of mine that uh, I think have a, a real good chance of getting on the force. Okay. Uh, I, I like this this squad of yours. Yeah, I mean, look, we're going to do right by you. We need this case. We need to crack it so we can get our uh, rightful places on the force. My friends, as, as a uniform patrolman, and myself as the chief of detectives. Honey, the snake's gone. Wait, Megan's trying to tell us oh something. Oh, my God. Megan? Megan? What does that mean? The snake is gone. The snake's gone. Or we have an illegal had. Uh, we could tell you, right? You're not a real cop. I I, I am a real I am a real policeman. Oh. I'm not. But I'm, I'm talking to you more as like the friend of like the whatever that certainly yes. Celtic. Please, uh, we're exchanging secrets. Yeah, sure. Yes. The time of secrets. We had a venomous Brazilian python here. Very large. It's gone. I think the ugly boy took it. How large is this? Brazilian python. 20 feet. Uh... Oh, you can stop there. <laughs> that's that's plenty long enough to be worried about. Almost as long as the Jaws shark. All right. The, uh, from the original Jaws. What other Jaws? Wait, well, what are were, you talking about? There were sequels, certainly. <laughs> Come on. Now, are you are you pretending that they don't exist? No, or no, 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 no. you just don't acknowledge no. them because... I'm, yeah, they're horrible. I'm not... Uh, we're not here to judge the quality of the Jaws sequels, sir. We're just here to judge how long the snake Like a shark could telepathically is. pass along a blood right. to look, another look, shark? Look, uh, look, we can't <laughs> re-litigate Jaws and its subsequent sequels I would right love now, to sir. litigate it. I wish someone had taken it to court. Okay, honey, I'm going to start dinner. Uh, I'm just going to... I just think it's some spaghetti, maybe. 
I'm gonna, uh, just, oh, oh my god! What is that? There's something in that the plastic cabinet! That is a gigantic cabinet. thing! It looks like... Uh, it's slithering! It's slithering! What slithers? What slithers? Um, uh, 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 oh shit! Toilet uh, paper? No, no! Uh, slinkies? Slinkies do slither, kind of! I'm panicking! I'm panicking! I'm panicking too! Ding dong, what? just returning your rake! Nick, what? Bye! Uh, it's Barbara. She is so judgmental. Don't tell her something slithering in the she, plastic cabinet. She refuses to ring the doorbell. She just comes in and yells ding dong. Barb! <laughs> All right, this snake is a problem. I'm not going to lie to you. Here's what I'm going to do. One of my uh, secret patrolmen is on her way over here. So I'm gonna. Uh, we're going to have to split up. And uh, Bert, you and me. Oh, I'm in on the case! We, Honey, I'm in on the case! Oh, this is great for you! Oh, we're we're going to go gosh. after this mean little kid. Let me get my crutches. Hold on. His tears are gone. This is a big deal for him. His self-esteem's been a little weird. Betty, I'd like you to meet Moira. She's going to be uh, working with you on this case to recover the snake. Oh, hi, Moira. Hello. It is a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> oh, wow. Two Irish people. This is exciting. Oh, you should see Ireland's full of us. <laughs> There's dozens. I, oh, gosh. Well, um, I'm, I'm not that athletic, but uh, I'll go wherever you go, and I'll try and give you back up. <laughs> oh, you're a beautiful little shamrock you are. Oh, Bert. officer, I'm ready. Oh, hi, Moira. You, you two know each other. <laughs> <laughs> Bert? How are you? Haven't seen you for a while. Oh, no, it's been quite a while, has it not? Yep, 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 about, uh, about uh, six or seven years. Six probably. or seven years since probably. you last felt my tender embrace filled with nothing but love nor hey. malice. Hey. And yet you, what? Uh, this is my wife, Betty. Oh, <laughs> oh she's my lovely. My sign. I, I can read. Uh, well, well, not everybody can always read, apparently. That's um, why Denny's has pictures on their menus. This is uncomfortable. What is going to happen? Sparks are flying. We'll find out when Spontanea Nation returns. Today's Spontanea Nation is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey there, it's me, Sam Elliott. That's right. I'm finally taking the plunge and getting an official website. A lot of people have just been reaching me through my Facebook but I thought it was time to have an online presence where you could buy all my merch. And I chose Squarespace. Heard good things about it from listening to Spontanea Nation. That's right, I'm a fan. Whether it's for business, a portfolio, a restaurant, mustache grooming kits, hint, hint, they're on sale now, or whatever else. In this day and age, you probably need a website. Now, building a website can be tough, even for a guy like me. You know how I'm like... You know, cowboy type dude. I'm always out there wearing boots, having a crazy ass mustache. You'd think, well, that guy has no problem building anything. Probably could build a barbed wire fence or a website for mustache products. But guess what? No matter who you are, it's a time consuming affair. And I don't have a lot of time to be digging around making websites. I just want it to be up. People will be able to get my mustache oils delivered to their homes as quickly as possible. I say people, mostly men. There are some women out there, though, <laughs> buying my mustache oils. And, hey, more power to you. Squarespace makes it easy to build beautiful websites without breaking a sweat so you don't sweat through your cowboy shirt with the snaps. They provide simple, powerful, and beautiful websites that look professionally designed regardless of skill level. No coding required. I don't like code. It's not a cowboy type thing. You know what I mean? It's more like spies. Off-brand for me. Now, not only does Squarespace provide you with intuitive and easy-to-use tools to create your website, Squarespace also has state-of-the-art technology. Now, You'd think I'm against it, but I'm not. You think spurs aren't technology? It's an invention. Yeah. They, oh, wait, what? I got lost in my thought. They got state-of-the-art technology powering your site to ensure security and stability. We all need stability, even if we're trying to get through a sentence. You know that you can trust in Squarespace for your website needs since millions of people and some of the most respected brands in the world trust in them too. Hey, there's probably brands that get zero respect that still trust Squarespace. <laughs> you got to give it up for them. They're like number eight. They try real hard. 
Squarespace gives you 24-7 online support and a beautiful website for only $8 a month. Back in cowboy days, that was a small fortune, but today it's nothing. You can even get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for the year. Start a trial with no credit card required. Start building your website today. And listen, this is me, Sam Elliott, telling you, when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, you got to use that offer code PFT to get 10% off your first purchase. And that way you show your support for Spontaneity Nation with Paul F. Tompkins and, indirectly, your support of Sam Elliott and his various mustache products that you can use, whether you have a mustache or not. Look, I'm going to level with you. It's all just aloe. Squarespace. Build it beautiful. So, Bert, uh, that seemed a little uncomfortable back there. I feel like the tears are going to start rolling again any second now. Please, you've been crying for 20 minutes now. (laughs) Bert, Bert, please. I've only just been able to feel like I could communicate with you. Ugh. What's, this, the, what's the story there? Oh, Moira and I, we had a real physical relationship. But honestly, you know, like sometimes you meet someone, you're like, man, this the the, the the touching and the bodies are perfect, but just there's just not an emotional, the emotional depth. Emotional component, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's important. Mm-hmm. It's very important. You have somebody, don't you? Well, I did. Sweetie? Yes, darling. Can't you stay for five more minutes before you go to work? Well, you know, crime never sleeps, and I gotta get out there and clean up this city if I want to be chief of detectives. I guess maybe if I felt like we were in a committed, monogamous relationship, I wouldn't have so many fears about you leaving every day. Well, now, uh, you know, I like to say that I'm uh, married to my work. I know, you, you like to say it a lot. I like to say it. It's one of my favorite things to say. I know. I'm married to my work. I'm married to my work. Maybe that's why you feel like you don't want to get married to anyone else. Well, I I, I feel it would be unfair because uh, of my high-risk occupation that uh, it would be uh, uh, terrible to leave you uh, 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 as, a, as a widow. Look, my mother was a widow and her mother before her was a widow. I know, and they're the worst. Was that insensitive of me to say? You've said worse. <laughs> I really have, haven't I? Could I hang? All right, table for two. Um, can we make it so that uh, uh, both the chairs are facing the same way? Oh, you mean like uh, strangers sitting next to each other? No, I'm sort of, I'm sort of thinking like uh, my chair uh, would face out to the restaurant, mm-hmm. and then her chair would be uh, on the other side of the table, uh, facing the back of my head. I paid thirty-five dollars to have my makeup professionally done. Well, we all make mistakes. That wasn't that bad. I don't know. I mean, I guess it was second to the time that... I can't believe you brought that up. I did. I did. I had to. Too horrible to even think about. I know. It was like it was a blur when it happened. What happened? You gotta tell, you can't just leave that out of the story. That's horrible. I'm on the edge of my seat. I I told her that when she sleeps, Mm -hmm. she talks in her sleep. And (laughs) I know, that's not even even a terrible part. Sorry. And this was, I thought this would be funny. (laughs) But that she was murmuring over and over again, I love you, Hitler. I love you, Hitler. You... I think I was saying that. No, I'm pretty sure it sounded like I love you, Hitler, and then you were making kiss noises. I don't even know anyone named Hitler. <laughs> do you do you know of anyone named Hitler? Oh yeah, there's that one guy. <laughs> oh, I think that was for the best. Probably, yeah. I think that was actually, yeah. Uh, Moira, I'm having a hard time uh, keeping up with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, oh. Walk a little slower. I guess you gained a little marriage weight, did ya? Getting married, be all happy, well, while others are sad, living alone. We like to cook together. I... Oh, he never liked to cook with me. He always used to say, I'll be home at six. I hope there's dinner on the table. Home? Oh. We lived together, didn't he tell you? Well, he alluded to lots of things, but it was a one-room apartment. We were never out of each other's sight. What have I done? 
Who is Bert? You married somebody who dated someone before you. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Well-trodden earth I'm walking on, that's what I think. I oh. dated one person, Bert, and I'll never date again. He broke your heart? No, I'm not a slut. Oh, only sluts get their hearts broken? Only sluts date more than one person. Uh, oh. It either works out or it don't. Wow. You Americans. Disgusting. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, so the snake will eat um, squirrels, rabbits, uh, large mice, rats, puppies. Uh, I don't know. Do you have a bait puppy? Oh, my god. Maybe gosh. we put it on a string, leave it out in snaked areas. Couldn't we use something? A cat. Sure. Oh, no, no. Sorry. We have... Our cats are... Uh, let's put a puppy out there. I, I, I'll head back to the store. If you don't want a puppy, we could cut off one of your fingers and use that. Anything. We just wiggle it. I don't like you either, but we've got to get this snake back. You it's don't a like hazard. Me? You just threatened to cut my finger off, Moira. I'm not an idiot. It was an option. I like you. Even though you got some a past, some problems... I was in a an abusive relationship, yeah. Oh. Let's just um fill out our calendar for the month and uh see who's going to be responsible for which chores. Uh I will do all the chores that involve having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you coming or what? Hey, I gotta go here. Hey, tell that wife you to shut up and do some chores. Hey, uh, the priest is outside. He says for you to <laughs> knock it off. Hey, don't be late for mass. It's a venial sin. Ooh. Is that how you say it? <laughs> hey, father. Yeah. What are you saying there? Venial. Do you mean venereal? <laughs> Don't you wish? <laughs> I think you probably do, Father. <laughs> I really do. I'm celibate. It sucks. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't like, you know, I can't have sex, so, uh... Well, yeah, you only, I mean, you're not a slut. No, that's true. Oh, that sounds terrible. Yeah, I... I, I brought a lot of it on myself, I'm probably sure. Well, you know, you'll, you'll be better off with a man like Bert. Until our relationship went south, I was a very happy woman. I'm glad you had that happiness. Everyone deserves it. Yeah, for a certain amount of time, and then the rest of their lives, they're miserable. Well, now you have this great, cool career. You're a real cop. Or, oh, I... Am I a real cop? I can't tell you. It's a secret. Okay, you guys, the snake thing's getting out of hand. I've heard police cars, and I heard a thing on NPR about it. Yeah, also, like, we're small enough that a snake could eat us. Wait, a fully produced piece on NPR? <laughs> yeah. The local NPR station has a lot of good stuff on it. You guys should listen. What did NPR say about the snake? Like it's, with Robert Siegel? It wasn't an all things considered type thing. It was part of the local NPR news break at the top of the hour. Oh, like the pledge drive. Exactly. Uh. So they said the snake is, is running rapid about the town. People have had sightings of snakes. Small Yorkies have gone missing. We did something so bad. This is not good, Tommy. We should give that snake back to the store. You can't give something back that you don't have, Alfred. Sorry. That's a pretty good point, Alfred, actually. Right. But maybe we should turn ourselves into the police. Yeah. I would like to throw a figurative can of dog food at that idea. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I said it. All right, uh, Bert. <clears throat> Look down at the ground. What do you see? Oh, wow. Okay. I see a cigarette butt. I see, uh, like, grass growing over between the sidewalk. Uh, right, right. Do you see the tiny footprints? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's, mm -hmm. like, uh, four sets of little kid footprints. See, I would never figure that out. I'm more of a pet man. This is clearly your calling. Well, I don't understand. So, like, you're you're good. You're a good cop. R well, thank you very much. But uh, because you're a pet man, you could see the cigarette butts. Well, I can see like a trail of a snake right there. The uh, snake trail. Oh, wait a minute! We're looking for a snake. Holy cow! No, 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 we're looking for the we're looking for the little kid gang. Oh, okay. Well, forget the snake then. But maybe the snake is with the little kids. 
working together. This falls into your territory, Britta. Uh, I mean, oh, sorry, Goldstein. As much as as much as a you know a snake can work with people, I don't know that how sounds, much she can really. You know, people have a lot of biases against snakes. Wait a second. You know about snakes. How well? My name is on the store. How I, do you not know this? No, I. What, what, you don't remember that I'm illiterate. Oh gosh! If only you'd put your pictures up there. Oh, you know what? She was Betty was thinking like like a funny caricature, right. but not like far side, so you can't recognize us. Like just sort of like exaggerating our normal features. Yeah, the problem is though they can be off, uh, they can often be so unflattering that uh, you regret it. You got to go into work every day and you see that caricature. Well, it's not like I have like a, like a weird nose like you. Like I'm like a handsome guy. What are you? Weird. Well, you know. I think my nose is very, uh, it's, a, it's prominent for sure, mm-hmm. but uh, I think it's uh, very- It's like someone r- took like a wooden child's block and just like glued it onto like a face. It's like a very square- I, I like to think of it as aristocratic. And the recipe calls for a quarter cup of- <gasps> Heather! Oh, don't move! Oh my God, what was that? Oh my God, Barbara, I don't know, but it's not because my home is not clean. Oh my God, is it an ant or something? And uh, more snake sightings. Snake, snake sightings have been reported. Uh, and remember, if you'd like to know more about snakes and how they can eat you and what to do to prevent that. Uh, don't, don't, don't forget about the Doctor Who scarf. And don't forget, you can win this uh, replica of uh, the Doctor Who scarf. Fourth worn, Doctor, Tom worn, Baker. Worn by the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker. Uh, so please get those pledges in. Uh, we desperately need your money. The government only gives us so much. It's really not a lot. Got this canine bobblehead a doll. Canine bobblehead doll. And of course, every extant uh, footage ever recorded of Are You Being Served? This is stuff that didn't even make it to television, things that were cut out of the show. Uh, a lot of it is just the actors standing around waiting for a new take to begin. Uh, some of it is accidental cameras pointed at the floor, but it is the floor of the set of Are You Being Served? Uh, so. We got the behind the scenes from Sesame Street when Maria and Gordon were having their torrid of sex affair. That's right. We do have a Maria and Gordon sex tape. That, for the uh, kids. For the kids. Well, I mean, you should watch it with the kids. Don't Don't watch it with the kids, but they were... They certainly were misguided in their attempts to make a sex tape for... Uh, we got a bunch of videos of Mr. Hooper teaching you how to roll up uh, hand-rolled cigarettes. Uh, yeah, I'll take a pack of Benson Hedges Ultralight 100s and a bag of rice. All right, here you are. Jesus Christ, what is that thing? Oh, oh my oh. God! My ankle! My store is very clean! God! May I, may I help you two ladies? Well, you seem to be in a, in a terrible rush. Yes, uh, we are looking for some sort of animal capture. We don't know what kind of animal it is, but it's not because my home is not clean. Wait, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to those two women over there. What do you want? Well, there's somebody... You just go up to women and uh, uh, objectify them and talk to them all. <laughs> We're not decorating the place, my friend. Okay, okay there seems to be. Did you want to say something? And uh, now I'm just waiting to see what you're all about. All right, you are. You are also not the two women I was looking for. Pardon me. Keep going. I talked to that woman in the makeshift uniform over there, and that one lady that uh, from here I can I can this tell is she, a smell, terrible she smells. She smells like pets. And I think our marriage is actually balanced because, you know, it's going to help you know, me. Yeah, it to takes her. two people. You know, really does. Excuse me. Oh. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes? Uh, ladies, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, are you, by any chance, uh, animal finderers? Well, uh, of sorts. Uh, today we might be. Well, there's a giant snake in my restaurant over there. <gasps> Eureka! Is it a metaphor? <laughs> Betty. You're having a fun joke. I don't know. What oh, it's a snake shop. Let's. Oh, yes. Well, we're, we're, on, we're on it. We're on it. <laughs> Look, Bert. Hmm? The little footprints, they end right behind this wooden, this old fashioned wooden fence with the one slat missing. Oh, man. It's like, you remember that book series, Alfred Hitchcock and the Three Detectives? <sighs> Bert, I'm going to tell you for the last time. I am illiterate. Oh, gosh, sorry. But I do remember that book series. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So it was not for naught. Uh, 
we suppose we pull this slat aside? This seems like the kind of hole a child would fit through. Bert, that's exactly what I was thinking. This is the hideout of that little kid gang. <gasps> Let's be very quiet and peek through this knot hole and see if those little kids are in there. Wish I never got up this morning. I want you all to go home and write a short story about your feelings. Oh, and you better bring it in tomorrow. Tommy, wait a minute. I feel like a presence. Don't you feel it? You know, sometimes like Christmas like, presents. No, is it you're like so the air? Dumb. The air like, is moving a little bit, like kind, a ga ga ghost. Kind of, or a will of the wisp, or you know, sometimes we stop talking and it feels like someone's in the room and it's just Alfred. But then other times it's not him. It's like there's a presence here. I do feel it. You guys be cool. Tommy, look through the knot hole, right? Do you see that, Bart? I can hear those kids. Yeah, I can hear them. I can, like, really hear them. And this look, is hardly a fence. Look, look. I, I think that the gang is falling apart. I, I think they're rebelling against their leader, that little Episcopalian one in there. That's the one! Yeah. You can tell because he's just an ugly boy. All right, now. He's got a nose like yours. Remember? I think he's a, a handsome lad. Um, remember that we're adults and we can physically overpower them and probably just knock this fence down. I've always wanted to fight kids. <laughs> Now's your chance, Bert. Oh. All right, let's go. One, two. Ah, what are you kids doing? Ah! Stay right there. You're all under arrest. Yeah. For pet store robbery. That's my forehead you threw a can at. How do you know it's just? Copper and other guy. Is it you? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. <gasps> she got me. All right, I'll pick up these two. You pick up those two. Literally, like I can physically pick them up. Like, They're just by little the kids. Off of the neck. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Do what you like. Shake Let's them up. Go. You got no evidence. We don't have any of the pets anymore. Did you throw dog food at this fella's head? Maybe, but if I did, it was provoked. Oh really? Bird is yeah. Just true. Did you provoke this child into throwing a can of dog food at your head? I dared him to. Well, that's right there. It's a provocation. You can't be in a gag and not take a dare. Well, Everybody knows that. Well, here's what I'll say to you. Tell it to the judge. Oh! All right, uh, the last I saw him, he yes. was slithering under these tables and caused quite a quite a stir amongst two women who, I they were very upset when I talked to them outside. I wasn't even meaning to talk to them. Then these other two women, I don't think had anything to do with the snake at all. They were very rude indeed. And now I'm talking to you. So please, can you catch this snake? We have to get into the mind of the snake. And the snake is, is just as scared as we are. Oh, everybody knows that about the snake. St. Patrick taught us that. <laughs> who? St. Patrick. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. Yes, that's exactly what I said. So we have to find the darkest, uh, coziest place a scared 20-foot snake would go. Oh, I know. Uh, there is a statue in town with a giant hand. <laughs> Shall we cut it off and scoop the snake up with that? The great hand? The great hand, reminding us all that all people should come together and shake hands, no matter the race. That's a great idea, Moira. Let's go get that sculpture. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. I don't care. <laughs> All right, folks, if you could just uh, stand behind this velveteen rope, we are closing the statue for the rest of the day. Oh, I wanted to make a wish. I'm sorry, this velveteen rope is uh, sort of a symbol of the, the, the statue being closed. I wanted to make it a picture like I was shaking the great hand. A uh, different person, I'm sorry, but uh, that is not possible. I wanted to climb inside and fall asleep. <sighs> you are a lovable hobo, but I'm unfortunate. Unfortunately, you are not going to be able to come in. Wait, wait! Uh, folks, I'm sorry. Wait. I just I just put up the velvet. Citizens rope. arrest, uh, Moira. Hold on, police. Oh. Ish. Well, uh, we need this hand. May I ask for what? The, this lovable hobo is making a pretty convincing case to just kind of snuggle up to it. I'm awful tired. Well, perhaps he can have it after we're through. But we've got a giant snake to catch. And only a giant hand can catch a giant snake. I may just be a docent, but that makes sense to me. All right, everybody! Yeah? 
I'm gonna take down the velvet rope and we are together gonna help this Irish? I don't want to judge. No. European, definitely European. I am Irish and I, proud of it. We're gonna... <laughs> Kiss me. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, yeah, thank okay. you, thank That's you. Proof. All right. Everybody, put your shoulders into it. We're gonna carry, now, how far away is, did you say yes, oh, snake? Two blocks. Two blocks. Holy long shit. Long blocks. No. That's a long time. That's a long way to carry it. It's a, a social contract. Here. We all stood here while this went down. You are part of it now. Yeah, don't be a baby, you hobo. Community. <laughs> Six seasons and a movie. <laughs> all right. You guys heard the cop. I'm just going to hold you kids up here in the air until... Wait, what's going on over there? It looks like... What? Those people are moving to the great hand. I'm flying. All right, look. We're going to put you kids down. And we're going to ask oh. you to go to the police station and turn yourselves in. Oops. Will you do it? Okay. Yeah, we'll do it. That kid's toad is for <laughs> sure <laughs> duplicitous. You're not lying, are you? I'm not lying with my mouth. Oh, he's got me on that one. I can't even parse that. I have no idea what My that fingers means. are crossed. Uh, oh. Both hands. See ya, copper. There he Come goes. Come on, gang. Ah, we, okay. Once again, this is a time where I could have implied a little violence towards a child, and this really would have worked out in our favor. It gets complicated with paperwork. Now, look, we'll have to let those kids go, and in the meantime, see what's going on with these people. Just, they're, they're trying to steal the great hand. Ho! Heave! Ho! Heave! Ho! Betty! Heave! Ho! Moira! Bertie! Everybody! What are you doing? We've come with the giant hand to catch the giant snake. Ah, of course, that makes perfect sense. Snakes love hands. And at the very least, he'll think it's five girlfriends. Oh, we had a net at the pet store, Betty. Oh, jeez. You no. had a net? You had a net to catch a 20-foot well, we snake. We had a case. I, we, the snake didn't just appear in the middle of the store. We, I mean... Why didn't you bring this up when we were back at the pet store? Well, you, you said cage. we were splitting up. Sure, but that doesn't mean it doesn't preclude you well, mentioning that there's a case. To I'm put sorry, I know how to read. All right. Meow. Snake. Yes, yes, Megan. You're causing a lot of trouble. My people are very upset. So what troubles my middle name? <laughs> First of all, stop. Get out off of my throat! Sorry. Hi, I'm a bird! <laughs> oh my god. What are we talking about? We're a I'm asking the snake very nicely to go back to the pet store. I want to go back to Peru! <gasps> well, that's up to you. You're free. You can fly. What about you, Mouse? Well, I just want to live inside a baseboard in a perfect little semicircle arch that's all my own. That is a very delicious thing to say, Mouse. You're welcome, Cat. We're enemies, but we can also be frenemies. For now. Let's deal with the snake. Yeah, what about the snake or the mouse? You guys are enemies, too. I mean, everybody's kind of my enemy. I can't believe you even came over here. Why did I? What's wrong with me? Listen. Yes. For the sake of the rest of the animals, they're going to think we're all bad. You got to go back to the store. Yeah, it's a real black eye on animals if you slither around so much. Black <laughs> eye is what he said, not black guy. Did you think I said black guy? <laughs> I did for a I second. I didn't think that. <laughs> I meant black eye. Yeah. Like it's not good. Black guys are good. Black eyes are good? I don't no. <laughs> see Super. color. I, all, all eyes look the same to me. Listen, Snake. Will you just get in that giant hand? Fine. Megan, I had my taste of freedom. It was pretty good, right? It was the best. Thanks, Snake. You're really doing us all a solid. You're welcome, Megan. Now, Mr. Mouse, could we have a private meeting over here? This is this kind of meeting where you eat me? No, I got a screenplay I'd like to show you. Oh, okay, cool. Well, the snake is back. Those kids are still on the loose. But I feel like the larger, greater good was serviced by capturing the snake. I don't know. I, th I think the robber is probably more pressing. Well, you, you think, think that because that little kid threw a can of foot, dog food at yeah, your head after you dared head. him to. Yeah, well, that's kind of on you, Bert. Betty, 
Bert? Officer Goldstein? Your terrible pet store owners. And maybe you should consider a new line of work. Well, I'll just say, you have a confusing last name for an Irishman, and you should learn to read. It's never too late. Yeah, your best friend's a ghost, jerk. Okay. No, we're just, me and the, me and the ghosts are just work friends. Oh, it's what? nothing weird, right? We're just, just work together. We're just work friends, mm-hmm. yeah. Sure. Do they know I mean, that like, you're just work friends? I don't know. I mean, it's like I'd, I'd hang out with them after the shift, you know what I mean? Like go to a bar, but I wouldn't call them up on a weekend and say, hey, do you want to go to a ball game or something? I feel as if we got no track. Do you go to like a ghost bar or like, is no, there a ghost a bar? regular bar. Oh, Betty. <gasps> cheer ourselves for wrapping up this case. Another case closed by the secret police force. Wait a moment. <laughs> What's that? Why I didn't get to participate at all. Neither. We were totally left out yet again. Well, somebody has to hold down the fort of the secret police headquarters. True that. And besides, weren't you getting us tickets to the ball game so we can all hang out over the weekend? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. You said we would. Yeah, yeah, I did. And you know what? I meant it. You guys are truly the best, not just work, the best friends a fake detective could ever have. Oh, Thanks. Thanks. Ch- cheers. Ta. Up the Irish! (laughs) And it all happened in a place called Pet Store Post Robbery. Julie? Yes. Where can people find you online? (gasps) Ah! I'm on Twitter! That's right! You joined it! Yes, I did! Welcome to a thing that is sometimes interesting. Yeah, I'm waiting. (laughs) If anybody can make me love it more. Do you check? Are you are you checking it every day? Are you setting stuff out there? What are you doing? Uh, well, I've really I'm super new. It's just been a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I've put a few things up and I've checked in on it. You ever put some twit pics out there? I haven't put up pics. I put up little jokes, jokelets. Do you link to things ever? Not yet. Is that a thing? It's a thing. You can choose to do it or not. A whole new world awaits you, Shuli. I think I have a lot to Twitter learn. But so, what is your handle on Twitter? Do I say at first or do I just... Don't say at first. We, I mean, everyone does, but we don't need to anymore. That's the only way to access people, so you don't have to say it. It's Shuli Cowan. Shuli Cowan. A-S-H-U-L-I-E-C-O-W-E-N. That's right. There we go. And do you have anything you'd like to promote here in the, this new year of 2016? Uh, opening night, the improvised musical in its 17th year at I.O. West, Friday nights at 9 p.m. Also with Mr. Mark McConville of Super Ego and Spontanea Nation. That's right. Go see that show. I hope that there are no rival shows happening at the exact same time. One can only cross their fingers. Jean, anything to promote? <laughs> yes, an improv show that incorporates music, but we don't sing it. Uh, Friday nights at 9.30 at, uh, at um, the UCB Franklin. That's right. And where can people find you online? Uh, Villa Peak. Villa Peak! Easy! Sure. V-I-L-L-E-P-I-Q-U-E. Villa Peak. Yep. Crystalman! I'm doing my uh, improvised dance show. We have music, but we don't <laughs> sing songs or do scenes. Right. We just do movement <laughs> to the to the music. Right. Mm-hmm. And quick steps. It's what? just it's just dancing, right? Mm-hmm. You're oh, just, it's, just it's, a, it's 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 done at um, an improv theater, but it's right. just dancing. There's no story or anything. That's just a good some, idea. So music is played, oh, and then okay. you all start dancing. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like you're watching people have a party. You're watching people learn how to dance. <laughs> That sounds fun. Yeah. It's like the back row of a parade. Where are you at online? Mr. Chris Tallman. That's both internet uh, and not internet. Sure. <laughs> you, you're also in life, you are Mr. Chris Tallman? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what would you like to promote? Uh, Thundermans. Thundermans is on the Nickelodeon. Um, uh, untitled uh, New Line horror movie comes out in January. Oh, shit. Do you get killed? No, I'm not in it. It's just coming out this month. Uh, it's continuing. Um, uh, more than anything else, though, I'm just really looking forward to hearing you uh, sing the lyrics to the Spontaneous. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Evan Schletter, of course. EvanSchletter.com. Evan Schletter on Twitter. Not on Instagram yet. You should get on Instagram. It's fun. But maybe you don't have time to take a bunch of goddamn pictures. You got stuff to do. 
But go to Eben Schletter's website and buy his albums because Eben Schletter is only the best. Seriously, he's got a lot of stuff, a lot of content online that you can check out. And it's all there waiting for you. Some things you have to pay for. Some things are for free. Why not sample things? See what you like. See what you don't. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That took a turn. What would I like to promote? <laughs> well, I would like to promote my TV show, No You Shut Up, which is on the Fusion Network, F-U-S-I-O-N. I like spelling things. <laughs> do you think I sound like a musical robot? Please do check out No You Shut Up, uh, which also features our friends from Spontaneation here, Colleen Smith and Ted Michaels and Drew Massey and Victor Yared, uh, Michael Ostrom. Uh, it's such a fun show. Um, we're uh, adding new segments this year, um, but February... Fourth, I believe, is our debut date, our premiere date. So please do check that out. And we're putting, we're going to put a bunch of stuff online as well if we haven't already. Um, so get ready for fun with that shit. Uh, Spontaneous Nation Live happens the first Saturday of every month at Largo at the Coronet. Go to pauleftompkins.com slash live for tickets. And we look forward to seeing you at a live show. The live shows are always a lot of fun. So I hope you will come out and see them. Ah, oh, there we go. You can find me online at the usual places if you know how to spell my name. Good luck to you. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting us. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week. Until next time, this is Paul F. Tompkins singing. to come back around. This is our longest episode. Here we go. <clears throat> the challenge that lays before our eyes We rise to greet a brand new morning We fight and rise and fight and greet a new day's morn and that is how you get to Carnegie Hall everybody shut up <laughs> hey guys here are some things you could learn by listening to the cracked podcast Freon is actually a oh. gas that doesn't exist it's an artificial gas it's owned by DuPont 1900s hospitals had the reputation of being like frat houses. Sitting is the new cancer, I think, and people who stand in their jobs have longer lifespans than those that sit. Steph Curry ran 50 miles over the course of 18 playoff games. Learn more mind-blowing facts by listening to the Cracked Podcast. Check us out on Earwolf.com, Howl, or your favorite podcast app. This has been an Earwolf Media Production. Executive Producers Jeff Ulrich, Scott Ackerman, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. EarwolfRadio.com The Wolf Dead.